Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to the studio. In the studio currently, we're joined by respected Feroz Shah Sahib, who is serving as Afsar Jalsa Salana. Assalamu alaikum Feroz Sahib. Wa alaikum salam, Mr. Sahib. Thank you for joining us. I know uh, it's the final day, the final session is happening. Um, there are a lot of responsibilities on your shoulder. Can you tell us a bit about the office and um, what sort of responsibilities um, does that office entail? Jidil Saj Salana office, uh, by the grace of Almighty Allah, we have got a very good team that looks after some of the major departments, which is preparation of food, Ziafat department, transportation, accommodation, and maintenance, which includes transportation of all the equipment and items that is required for this Jalsa. So they are the major ones, but behind the scenes, like you now port cleaning is another important one that every afternoon we have to continue to do that to ensure that there's uh, equipment available for the next day. Right. Yeah. And um, Prosa, <coughs> I know that you've been serving in this capacity, in this role um, for a number of years. Um, how have you seen the growth of this department over the years? As for example, um, you know, yesterday, the figures that we have that there were approximately 3,300 people, guests attending um, the Jalsa yesterday. So what are some of the challenges and growth that you have seen in your capacity as Afsar Jalsa over the course of the um, last few years? I think it is the blessing of Almighty Allah that we have got a large number of people who are attending Jalsa every year. So since I have started this responsibility, every year I have seen that the number of uh, attendees or the participants of this Jalsa has increased. With that, our responsibility and the workload increases too. So this year, we have accommodated over 220 members, which is the first time that we had to accommodate that many guests. And all these guests are the newcomers to Australia. Right. We had to restrict some of our members, uh, and we apologize for that, that we could not accommodate everybody. Mm -hmm. But we have given the priority to the newcomers to the Jamaat. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we have been very successful in accommodating all of them, and uh, at the same time, picking up from the airports sort of thing and uh, taking yeah. them to the river. Um, that's uh, what I want to yeah. talk about that, um, you know, you've, you've touched upon accommodation, mm -hmm. um, you know, that there's, of course, there's hundreds of other guests, but 200 guests specifically have been accommodated um, in accommodation across from Jalsaga, various accommodations across from Jalsaga. Uh, in regards to transport, I mean, round the clock, we saw during the registration process of Jalsa Salana, um, the, the department had requested the arrival time, the departure time. So transportation department is working round the clock before Jalsa, during Jalsa, and after Jalsa. Yes, um, I think uh, there was a lot of pressure on the transport department. One of the issues that we had is the cancellation of flights. Mm. What we did as the part of the planning was that to uh, sit down and uh, work out how we're gonna pick the members and minimizing the wait time. Our limit this year was maximum of one hour. So we didn't want anybody to wait at the airport for more than one hour. But at times we had to, uh, and we, we had prepared our as a backup of additional drivers. So we have maintained that um, plan that we had, but uh, there were some extra trips that were made in between to cater for the delays in flight or cancellations that we had to you know, go through. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, you know, that's, I think that's a really big achievement that guests coming from all over Australia um, and also internationally um, and the department ensured that they were not waiting for more than one hour. Um, I was speaking to a few guests and Alhamdulillah, Rosa, you know, I think, you know, this year we had, I mean, Jamaat, I'm not sure, we probably didn't have to hire any external vans. I mean, Jamaat had its own transport over the years. We've accumulated a fleet of vans which are able to um, accommodate the transportation department? Yeah, no, we, we do have enough uh, transport uh, vehicles available to do that. But this year we still had to hire some because we have provided accommodation, uh, sorry, transportation from the mosque and from residents to right. the Jalsaga and back because some of these newcomers have not been able to like uh, have their own transport in the short period they have been here. So we had to transport this, uh, our guests to the Jalsaga and back. And the other thing that we had to do this year was to provide a shuttle bus from the from the car park to the uh, ladies' uh, exhibition hall. Mm. So there was some additional transport required for these purposes. 
no doubt <coughs> tremendous amount of planning goes into this Farooq sahab uh, Farooq sahab you have served in Majlis Khudam al Ahmadiyya Sadr Majlis Khudam al Ahmadiyya you have served in Ansarullah uh, and you have been serving you know in important offices throughout the Jalsa Salana Australia throughout you know our history as well um, over the years you know we have seen the evolution and transition of Jalsa Salana Australia from being held at Mazdan Park Masjid Baitul Huda our national headquarters our national complex and now <coughs> to this indoor convention center the prestigious um, Rose Hill race course here in Parramatta so can you just elaborate on this transition this evolution um, what are some of the benefits of holding it you know in this complex yes yeah, you said like now we uh, held the Jalsa Salana at the Masjid uh, complex for quite a number of years it had its own challenges that also had its benefits to people mm. going to the mosque and praying inside the mosque and mm. uh, it's a blessing of its own Absolutely. Uh, because of the spice uh, the uh, and, and the council requirements we had to move from our uh, masjid uh, property to a outside external property which is uh, where we are now we have been uh, holding jalsa here for the last three years uh, the benefits are there that uh, now the, the, there's no issues that whether it rains or, or, or anything like that, or whether the temperature is high, we have got an air conditioned building which we can accommodate members in. Mm -hmm. The challenges that we have is to do the setup. Uh, last few years, and again this year, we get uh, from 8 a.m. on a Thursday to 11 p.m. on Thursday, same, same day, to bring all the items set up and get it all ready for the next day, uh, day's day function. So that's a challenge and uh, a lot of planning is required and a lot of volunteers uh, that uh, are uh, uh, like uh, supporting us in this uh, cause and uh, uh, the coordination between departments and areas making sure that we do not waste the time of the volunteers. Mm -hmm. A lot of planning is required. Alhamdulillah, they have done a very great job and we have completed all these tasks within this uh, time that we have been allocated. Alhamdulillah, no <laughs> doubt it's a great logistical challenge. Uh, Farosab, lastly, um, I know that you've got a lot of duties, responsibilities. Um, it's the final day, it's a concluding session of uh, Jalsa Salana Australia. But can you just touch upon the future? Because uh, we know that, um, that in about two years' time, you know, this place, this Rose Hill Gardens um, race course, this facility, this convention center will not be available. So what is, can you comment on the future planning? Uh, what's in the pipeline? What are some of the options that mm -hmm. we may be pursuing or looking at in the future? Yeah, now we have been advised that uh, this facility may not be available after next year. Um, with the guidance of uh, respected Ami Sahab, we have, been, uh, we have started to look at uh, areas outside uh, within a close distance so we can find some property that the Jamaat can have where we can hold Jalsa. So that process is uh, happening behind the scenes and a lot of effort uh, and, and um, a contribution by members that we are looking at properties uh, nearby so we can find a suitable place and we can hold Jalsa. So that's what the plan is at this mm. current stage. Inshallah, look, mm -hmm. our prayers are um, with you, you with your department, with the volunteers. Um, I know I was speaking to respected Ami Saab as well that, uh, you know, that before Jalsa, during Jalsa, every day, Hazur Anwar Eidur Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz um, you know, is, is informed, is reported to, um, and his prayers are requested and asked for, for the success of this Jalsa Salana. And inshallah, um, in the future we will see that the Jamaat of the Prophet Salam here in Australia will continue to grow, will continue to flourish. And no matter which center we find, no matter which convention center we find, no matter how big the hall is, inshallah, days will continue to come where they will continue to be too small for this Jamaat of the Prophet peace be upon him. Inshallah. Uh, we will be back uh, with uh, more programs for the viewers from the 36th Jalsa Salana of Australia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.